Hey guys, it's Bear with the Gimme Camper. We're going to be doing an installation today on the Anderson Ultimate Hitch. I decided to go with that rather than the B&W Companion Slider that I had. Just because it's so big and hard to work with. I did a video on that um, a few weeks ago. You can check that out. Link's in the corner. The issue with that hitch, the only issue that I have about, well there's two issues. It's heavy. It's hard to get in and out because it's heavy. And number two, I never needed the slider. And so the only time I ever used it was to make that video. And I get a little ouchy here on my tailgate. I really just wanted to, to just move to something easier to get in and out of the truck because I thought that was gonna be an easier process than it was. So as long as I get the same amount of uh, turning radius out of this Anderson hitches that I had with the uh, B&W slider that wasn't slid back, then I'm gonna be happy. Cause I had plenty of room there People give these things rave reviews all the time, and I just want to try it out. Unfortunately, the only way to try out a fifth wheel hitch most of the time is to buy one. Don't you wish that a company would have some like that you could just hook up and, and see how it worked with your truck? That would be an awesome idea if you were in an area that had a lot of camper sales. Let somebody try out a hitch before they bought it. Just have one of like two or three different ones laying around. Granted, you couldn't do that with the the rail system unless you had they were sure they were going to get a rail system but so we got our ultimate hitch here it came in by amazon yesterday it came in a day early i ordered it on sunday it came on wednesday it had said thursday i think they were trying to cushion it a little bit because uh thanksgiving black friday was last week and we're going to get it ready we're going to go on an adventure this weekend so here we go now this base only weighs supposedly about 35 pounds, but the shipping weight is more because you have the adapter that the that goes on the pin and all that stuff in here too. Still much more manageable than the slider hitch that I had. So we're going to take a peek at these directions because that's what you're supposed to do even though I watched a video on this about 20 times. We also got safety chains for this. You know, that has to be a personal choice that you make and what you feel comfortable with. On Anderson's website, they actually say on the FAQs there, it's listed. And it said, I'll put that link in the description here. But their FAQ says that this was tested as a fifth wheel hitch and that it doesn't need safety chains. But they claim that one out of however many thousand hitches that they've had that a uh, DOT officer actually force them to get safety chains and that's why they sell the safety chains as far as me i mean there is a little bit of extra cost there but it's still a lot less than i had in the slider and it's a little bit more security i wouldn't really trust those chains for a whole lot but i'm just going to go ahead and do it before we put this hitch in we're going to clean the bed out for that we're going to use this uh, dewalt blower that i did a little video on pretty recently here on just using it to clean the top of the slides off and how it works for that. And so be sure to check that video out. The link's up in the corner here. And then for the Anderson hitch, it actually clamps down to the ball. So we gotta put the ball in. The B&W actually, you took this out and it had a spot on the bottom of this that went down in there. The one or two times that I had it out that actually made it harder to deal with because the whole thing was balancing on this uh, two and a half inches here and so you had that sticking out of the bottom so if you get one of those be careful about that you might have to build a stand to put it on or something like that you gotta go through here get this handle out and then you gotta unlock it Don't know how do it. so we'll deal with this in a minute first we're going to put the base in next step is flip this ball over so we're going to pull the pin on it We'll have to adjust that in a little bit. So that's how you're going to adjust how high your hitch is. Okay. And then we're going to loosen the main bolts uh, to make sure that they're, they can be adjusted. So the one on the top here, and there's two on the back of this square tube back here. Okay. 
by loosening these three bolts that allows this to move and so this goes down and there's a pin that goes through it that clamps underneath the ball of your gooseneck ball and then after you get that on there we tighten this up now you have to go back and tighten that after you have it loaded anderson says but these two just keep this metal metal piece from moving after you get it adjusted it's a pretty simple process pretty strong though You gotta loosen this till it's almost touching the floor. That way it'll go underneath the ball there. I'd say about an inch and a half for mine. That probably worked. We'll test her out. Remember when you put the base in, you want the ball to be on the back side of the truck. First you gotta put the pin in. The next step after you feel like it's pretty straight in the truck is to try to put the pin in to that tube that goes down around your ball. Put that in. Then you tighten the top bolt down to 60 pounds and the two back bolts down to 40 pounds. These are 15 16 inch size sockets. That's all there is to that. It's pretty easy, but I know I'm beating a dead horse. Tighten the top bolt down again after you put the trailer on. So that's going to do it for putting the base in, but now we got to put the coupler on the kingpin box. Now, ordinarily, you just jump to it. However, we got the safety chain, so if we, and those use one of the pins, so if we don't look at the safety chains first, then we're going to be doing the work twice. I'm lazy. What's in the box? What do you think it is? Another box! Nested boxes from Amazon. However, you know, if it's like a TV or something, they just put a label on it. But if it's just an unsuspicious box, they'll put it in another box. You got your chains that come on the plate. So I gotta look and see how all this stuff goes on. I've not paid a lot of attention to that. So I'll be back with you in just a minute after I look at the directions. You know what I was just saying about doing work twice? I forgot that this plate actually mounts underneath the ball. So I gotta take the base back out. Do your homework up here first. Now I've heard people talk about not using the plate in I just basically figured it out for my truck because a lot of them say if you got the uh, rails and stuff, you can just buy hooks to go on there. But you could theoretically put the the chains on the tow hooks for the fifth wheel hitch, but I got the plate, so I'm going to put it in. Plate. So the first step in mounting the coupler box with or without the chains is to loosen the set screws in the bottom. Those are a quarter inch Allen. Um, you can technically do it with a regular Allen wrench, but you're supposed to torque these to spec. So I recommend picking up one of these. They're not that expensive. I won't put it on the torque wrench when we put it on. But we wanna loosen those up. There's four of them. Two of them are down here in the back and two of them are up in the red cone. Then we want to remove the two bolts on the sides. The basic way this works is these two bolts 
you can see how they stick out on the edge they clip under the lip of your fifth wheel pin and that's what holds this on place this way loose but they're not coming out so we're just going to tap them with a wrench all right now that this thing's finally decided to play nice put it on here you don't want any, a lot of debris on there you got to make sure that the regular head of the bolt is next to the release because you don't want the chain to be right there so according to the directions we don't want to tighten these all the way up yet we're going to go ahead and put the washers and the eyes on there We're going to work on these four set screws in the bottom with our quarter inch Allen wrench. I'm just going to take them until they feel a little tight. It's at 40 foot pounds. That's what we're still set up from earlier. You want to do a crisscross pattern? Oh, so basically with this, it's bottoming out on this cone right before it tightens down. To get this one over here in the back, my Allen key kept bottoming out and hitting the socket. So I went and I couldn't find a bigger one. So I got a cheap quarter inch Allen, Allen wrench. And I just got a quarter inch socket put on there. And then I got a quarter inch to three eighths adapter. And then I got a three eighths to half adapter. Probably don't have to go through all this trouble, but if I'm gonna install it, I'm gonna install it right. Now the directions say to tighten these eye bolts up, but it says to be careful and just put them where they're snug because you can crack this uh, funnel. Actually the nut didn't move at all, so all I had to do was tighten the eyelet with the uh, wrench that I stuck in there just like this. Of course you want to make sure that it's not slipping. Basically you're just getting that lock tight good, that lock washer good and tight. That should be plenty tight. Put that through there. Put the chain in. And put the bolt back through. Then the last thing we have to do after that is to connect this to the pin box somewhere. So we got this thing on now we're going to hook it up just kind of see where level we need to get it make sure everything's working right because it's supposed to be raining in the morning and we're getting ready to go and i don't want to deal with it then
So I did have to reverse the coupler. If I would have measured it to start with, I would have installed it correctly. I just didn't have enough clearance there for the side of the truck. And I thought this would greatly limit it. But whenever I reversed it, I had much more clearance. So far, my first impressions is I'm really happy with this hitch. It does perform as equal to the B&W hitch that I had as far as the turning radius. And it's rated for twice what my trailer weighs. And so I'm not too worried about that. These are the turning limits that I was able to reach with the truck and you got to remember my truck does have a short bed on it. I'm just going to show you a few more examples of that and then I'll try to compare some aerial photos of the B&W hitch turning versus the Anderson hitch. Not forget to hit that subscribe button.